The de Havilland Flight Academy presents Chipmunk Flight Experiences at White Wolfer. Welcome to your Chipmunk Flight Experience. We hope you have a thoroughly enjoyable and memorable experience in this beautifully restored 1953 de Havilland DHC-1 Chipmunk. We will now present to you a series of short briefings to prepare you for your flight. Aircraft Entry So, we're now going to approach the aircraft from the rear, making sure that we first of all hold on to the canopy with the right hand, placing your left foot if you're left footed or right foot if you're right footed onto the black strip that you can see on the wing. It's very important that we use the black strip and do not put any of our weight uh, to the left. Those wings are made of fabric and if we were to put any weight on that area of the wing or the ailerons or the flaps uh, we will actually damage the aircraft. Aircraft entry part two. With the right hand on the canopy control, right foot on the black strip, move forward and put your left foot onto the black strip and also use your left hand to hold the center console and move up to the aircraft. So the pilot is going to sit in the front cockpit and the passenger, yourself, are going to sit into the rear cockpit. Now, to get into the cockpit, what we're going to do is first of all take our right leg, move it over and onto the seat and then pivot round. Using both hands, stabilize yourself and bring the left foot over so that you're now standing on the seat facing forwards. Once you're happy and you're stable, you can now slide your feet down either side of the control stick using your left and right hand to stabilize yourself on the side of the cockpit. Strapping in and buckle operation. Once you're sat in the cockpit and you're comfortable, uh, we now need to strap in. We have a four point harness in this aircraft. Uh, it consists of a lap strap so if you look to your right, you'll see a strap with a buckle on it. That buckle is fixed and it will have three holes in it. Each hole has a, a representing buckle that goes into it. And if you look down to your left hand side, you'll see another strap and that will need to go into the harness. So what we're looking to do first of all is adjust those straps so that we can actually use the straps. I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see how we operate the adjuster. So to adjust the strap, first of all on the left hand side we'll pull that away from us and then pull with the right hand to extend the length of the strap. We can now use that buckle and put it into the harness and what we're looking to do is put that into the top left hole as you're looking at it. Just give it a little wiggle just to make sure that it's secure, which it is. Okay, now we can adjust the straps equally on both sides to make sure that the buckle remains in the centre of the body. Adjust it by pulling the strap into the centre of the body on both sides, making sure that the buckle remains in the centre of the body. Make sure that it's firm but not overly tight. There we go. Okay, next we want to use the shoulder straps and secure the shoulder straps. So if you look over your left shoulder, grab hold of the buckle, bring it down and again adjust the strap by lifting up on the lever and pulling down on the buckle until it's the right length to secure into the harness. This one on the left hand side is going to go into the left hand hole as you look down. You'll hear the click, if you get a little wobble, get a little pull, you'll see that it's firmly secured. Repeat the process on the right hand side so the strap comes over the right shoulder, adjust the buckle again by pulling up and pulling down and then secure into the buckle and there we go we're nice and secure. Now with the shoulder straps again just adjust them so that they're firm but not overly tight. You need to be able to move your shoulders and arms. Lovely, that's good. Okay. Headset operation. 
now that you're safely secured in the cockpit, we need to put the headset on. On the right hand side you'll see a headset. It has really three main components. It's got the earphones left and right, so you'll see the protective black covers on those. The headset can be placed on the head with those earphones securely over your left and right ears. Now on the right hand side you'll see a microphone, microphone boom which you can pull down and place close to the lips. The microphone is activated when you talk and there's no need to press any buttons or other controls in the cockpit once the aircraft is running. On the left hand side you'll also see, correction, right hand side, you'll see there is a adjustable knob and that will control the volume of the headset. So if what you're hearing is too loud or too quiet, simply adjust by twisting the knob forwards and backwards to the desired level. The emergency brace position. In the extremely rare event that we may have to make an emergency or precautionary landing, I may ask you to adopt the emergency brace position. In this aircraft, we simply bring the feet to the rear and bring the knees together. However, we must ensure that we do not create an obstruction for the controls. So I may need you to slightly move the knees apart in the event that I need to operate the center stick. With your hands and your arms, bring them forward and cross them in front of you, placing them on the front canopy and then place your head on your arms and maintain that position until told otherwise. That is the emergency brace position. Headset removal and aircraft exit. Now that the flight is over, we need to exit the aircraft. So first of all, we need to remove the headset. Simply lift the headset up off of the ears and place it to the right-hand side and just straddle the aircraft canopy, cockpit canopy area and place that. Next, we need to undo the harness. And if you remember, we undo the harness by simply twisting the center buckle left or right and all of the components will come to pieces. Carefully move the lap strap left and right and with the shoulder harness straps again move left and right behind your shoulders. You're now ready to exit the aircraft in the reverse order that we enter. Aircraft exit part two. To exit the aircraft first of all we need to stand up and stand on the chair. We do so by putting our two hands front cockpit pull ourselves forward, bringing both feet up onto the seat and again looking forward. Now we need to turn our body to the right, securing ourselves by holding the aircraft, holding onto the aircraft and with one leg take one leg over and onto the black strip. Once we're safe and secure bring the right leg, the second leg over and again place on the black strip. Now we can reverse back down along the wing using the aircraft body to support ourselves and keeping our feet on the black strip until we're safely on the ground. COVID safety procedures. We're now going to demonstrate the aircraft cleaning both before and after flight. So what we're going to do is cleanse and clean the areas that are typically touched during the flight. So first of all we'll wipe down thoroughly the handles to the canopy. You'll see that the front canopy handle is mostly used, however for precautionary purposes we will clean the sides of the canopy in case we've used that for support purposes during entry and exit to the aircraft. The pilot will also use those handles to close the canopy on takeoff and open the canopy after landing. So again, it's very important that the handles are cleansed before and after flight. Next are the sides to the cockpit. Again, these are used for entry and exit. And again, very important to ensure that both sides are cleaned thoroughly before and after flight. Next, we have the center console, which again is used as a support mechanism to get in and out of the aircraft for both pilots. It's very important to use a clean the front area of the console which effectively is the back seat of the front cockpit, as well as the front edge of the rear cockpit 
which again is used for support purposes during entry and exit. Now, inside the cockpit, we have our headsets. We will remove the disposable covers, both off the microphone boom, as well as the headphones, and they will be securely disposed of into a secure bin. The headset will then need to be cleansed around the main headphone area, along the boom, and along the top. Again, using plenty of cleanser to ensure that all surface areas have been cleaned. Again, this procedure will be carried out both before and after flight to ensure that no bacteria will remain on those surfaces. Have gloves on. Yes, we've noted there that the pilot will normally have protective gloves on when carrying out this procedure, or alternatively will have used antibacterial cleanser to thoroughly clean their hands. The next item to cleanse is the stick, the control stick. Again, plenty of cleanser onto a cloth, reaching in and cleansing the stick. Notice that plenty of time is being used to clean all areas. Should any other aircraft component or part be used for training purposes, so if other pilots are being trained or converted onto the aircraft, then other controls within the rear cockpit or front cockpit will also be cleansed. 